Yosef went to visit his ailing father Yaakov and he brings his sons Ephraim and Menashe and Yaakov tells Yosef Ephraim and Menashe Kerubim and Shimon Yuli Ephraim, he gives them a gift he tells them that Ephraim and Menashe are considered like the Shvatim they're not the grandchildren of Yaakov they're considered like the children of Yaakov and any children that you'll have after them will be split among those two Shvatim and then in the next Pasuk in Pasuk Zion it says and, and, ya- and Yaakov told Yosef, you know, when I came from Padan Aram, Rachel died, your mother died, Rachel, my wife Rachel died, and I buried her on the way. I didn't even come into the heart of Eretz Yisrael, it's somewhere on the road near Yerushalayim, in Beislechem, and there I buried her. And then the story continues, and then it's a question if this happened right away or it happened a little bit later, but then the story continues. What, what's going on? Why is Yaakov bringing up this story that he buried Rachel on the side of the road right in the middle of nowhere? Why is he bringing it up over here? Rashi explains in the name of Chazal, Yaakov told Yosef, I know that you're upset at me. I know that you have kindness on me. Why didn't I give Rachel a proper burial in Chevron, in Maris Machpelah, where Avram and Yitzchak are Rivka, Avram and Yitzchak Rivka. All the important people are there. Why did I bury her on the side of the road? It's not, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a Bekovah that could place. It's not an honorable place to bury Rachel. Why did I do that? I'll tell you why. Because it's Baderech, it's on the way. And soon, and, and, and in many, many years, and in over a thousand years from now, there'll be a destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. And when the Beis HaMikdash is destroyed, the Yidim will go into Golis. When they're going into Golis, they're going to be downtrodden. They're going to be totally depressed. They're going to be without any, 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 any hope for the future. And then they're going to pass Rachel's Kever. And there they're going to daven, and they're going to cry. And Rachel is going to be awakened. And Rachel's going to go to the Kisei HaKovet, like the Pesach in Yirmiya says. And Rachel's Mavaka Albana, Rachel will cry for her children. And then HaKadosh Rachel will have Rachmanis, and he'll promise Veshav Uban Legvulam. That's why I buried her there. And I'm telling you now, so you, shouldn't, so you should understand. Okay, we have a good explanation, it makes sense, but why now? Why, right specifically at this moment, Yaakov decides to tell him. Yaakov could have told him years, decades ago, when Yosef was little, when Yosef was already a teenager, he was 17 years old, he could understand that. Okay, maybe he didn't manage to tell him that. They're living in Mitzrayim already for, for, for over 10 years, for 17 years, they're living in Mitzrayim. He didn't find another opportunity to tell him, he should know. I know you're upset. He knows that Yosef is upset. Why is he withholding this information? Maybe he'll say that he wanted to wait until right before he's nifted, the last possible moment, but this is also not true. There was a lot that happens after this episode. And he calls the other sons, and he benches again Ephraim and Menashe a second time. So there's a lot that's happening. There's something that's a connecting. There's something connected with the fact that he just appointed Ephraim and Menashe as two of the Shvatim Shifteka to be on the level of the brothers Reuben Shim and Reuben Shim and Yuli. There was something specific about this moment that Yaakov felt that it was a time to tell Yosef. What is it? My father, Rav Shleim Anayach, my Del Shlita, he says as follows, explains beautifully. He says that a person, when he has a personal uh, um, insult or a personal, a personal, a personal complaint, it's very hard for him to see that for the good of other people, this is why it has to be like that. If Yaakov would have explained to Yosef at any other point until this point that I had to do it because Klai Yisrael is going into Golis, Yosef perhaps would not understand that. He would not accept it. I don't understand. My mother, my, 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 my mother you bury on the side of the road. She's the one that you worked for 14 years and now you just throw her on the side of the road like that. Why? Because in 1500 years from now, <laughs> there's going to be a, a gullus, Kleis. I don't understand what that all means. Listen, we're a family now. This is my mother. Bury her in a good place. I don't understand what you're talking about. But now that Yaakov elevated Ephraim and Menashe to be like Reuben and Shimon, he didn't only elevate Ephraim and Menashe, he elevated Yosef. Yosef is now the father of two Shvatim. He's one of the, he's one of the Ovis now. There's Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, and Yosef. Yosef is considered not one of the sons of Yaakov, he's considered one of the Ovis of Klai Yisrael. At that moment, when he, when he became a person who's not only one of the sons of Yaakov, but one of the forefathers of Klai Yisrael, and he has the Achrayas, he understands, his 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 uh, um, his achrayis to Klai Yisrael, not only to himself, not only to his family, not only to his mother, then he realizes the responsibility that he has to care about everything that's going to happen to the Jewish nation throughout the entire history. Now he can understand it. Now he can appreciate the fact that bearing Rachel, even though it's a temporary insult to Rachel's covenant, to Yosef's covenant, but it's for the good of Klai Yisrael. You know when he can understand that? When he became one of the Ovis. 
That's when he's able to understand that. And right away, Yaakov doesn't waste any time. At that very moment, he says, you should know, now I'm going to explain to you why I buried Rachel. You've been thinking about it for decades. I know it's bothering you. I couldn't explain it to you till now because you wouldn't understand it. Once you have the responsibility of a leader, of one of the forefathers, of one of the always, now you'll understand and appreciate that for the good of Kla Yisrael, for the benefit of being able to daven at the Kever Rachel, that's why I buried her there. This is a lesson in leadership, a lesson of responsibility for Kla Yisrael, that not everybody can be able to appreciate that. But Yaakov felt that now Yosef was able to. Until then, was not able to. Good Travis. Please don't forget to subscribe. You'll get the video every week by subscribing. Put a like. Thank you very much. Good Travis.